let's talk about electrolytes. Uh, you've heard the term before, no doubt, uh, usually referencing Gatorade or some other sports drink. And they talk about replacing your electrolytes. So uh, what are electrolytes and, and how are they important to biology? Um, the second part of that question is easy. I don't care uh, because I care about chemistry and I want to talk a little bit about what an electrolyte is in terms of chemistry. So the definition of an electrolyte is pretty simple. It's a substance that conducts electricity if you dissolve it in water or if you melt it. Okay. So if it's molten or in solution, it will conduct electricity. If it does, that is an electrolyte. Um, we have a couple of uh, diagrams here. Uh, molten sodium chloride and then a solution of sodium chloride. And the one thing that you should be able to tell between these two things and what is common about them is that when sodium chloride is melted or when it's in solution, the ions are separated from one another. That's the key. In order to conduct electricity, according to Svante Arrhenius, who came up with this idea, there need to be ions in solution. Okay, so electri electrical conductivity requires charged particles, ions, to be present in the solution. Okay, uh, the more particles there are, the more ions there are, the better that solution or, or molten substance will conduct electricity. So um, how much electricity gets through is dependent directly on how many ions you have. Okay, the more ionized the substance is, the better it's going to conduct. So now we, we can kind of tie this into things like solubility how well something dissolves uh, when we're talking about salts. Uh, the better a salt dissolves, the more ions it will produce in solution, and therefore the greater uh, it will conduct electricity, the stronger an electrolyte it will be. Okay, So we have three general characteristics. We have strong electrolytes, weak electrolytes, and what we call non-electrolytes. And if you look at these, they're just very simple cartoon drawings, but it give you a basic idea of how it works. A strong electrolyte, everything is broken up. Uh, a weak electrolyte, some of them are broken up, and a non-electrolyte, none of them are broken up. Okay, So strong electrolyte substances are extensively ionized, almost entirely, if not entirely, ionized. That means every single particle of the substance you put in there splits into ions. Okay, Very, very soluble salts, strong acids will do this. They'll produce lots of ions in solution. The, sol the solute of the solution consists only of ions, and therefore we're going to produce a quite a bit uh, of conductivity. We're going to be able to conduct electricity very, very well. Okay, So for example, sodium chloride, hydrochloric acid, sodium hydroxide, these things are strong electrolytes. Weak electrolytes, the substances that are dissolved are not extensively ionized. In other words, uh, some of the particles turn to ions, but not many. Mostly it's just molecules or neutral, or neutral particles. Okay, So weak acids and bases partially soluble salts will fit into this category. When we talk about weak acids, we're not talking about concentration, we're talking about whether or not it ionizes. Okay, So a strong acid doesn't necessarily mean um, that it's very concentrated. Okay, You can have a strong acid that you could dip your hand in and not have, feel any effects of because it was very dilute, but it just strong means it splits completely. Weak means it does not split completely. Okay, um, Weak electrolytes do conduct electricity, but they do it weakly. Okay, um, examples of that would be like acetic acid, magnesium sulfate, ammonia, things like that. Um, they don't produce a tremendous number of ionized particles, and uh, and therefore they don't conduct electricity super well. And then finally, we have non-electrolytes. Um, non-electrolytes; these are substances that don't split into ions when you dissolve them or when you melt them down. Okay, uh, molecular compounds are what we're talking about here, or very very insoluble ionic compounds, maybe. Okay. Uh, the solute is just going to be neutral neutral molecules. There will be no ions in solution, okay, or at least not enough to conduct electricity. Um, and that's that's essentially what non-electrolytes are. They don't conduct electricity. So uh, glucose, sucrose, sugars, things like that, things that are molecular compounds, will uh, will not conduct electricity. Okay, so how can we tell? Uh, we need a method to do that. So let's take a look. One of the ways that we can test the conductivity of a solution is by running an electric current through it. Uh, we need something to register that the current is actually flowing. So in my, my great conductivity tester of science here, I simply have a light bulb which uh, is attached to this little rig here, it's plugged into the mains, and uh, I have two 
electrodes sticking down. Those two electrodes are not touching, therefore electricity is not passing between them. If I connect them with something like a piece of metal, the electricity will flow and the light bulb will light up. That's how I can tell if electricity is flowing between those two leads. Um, you'll wonder why I'm not being shocked uh, by putting the metal, I'm actually touching it with my hands, and that's because electricity always takes the shortest path between two points, and so it's going between the two leads. It's not bothering to come out and go through my hand, okay? So uh, we can stick these two leads into some water, for example, and you'll notice the light bulb doesn't light, and it doesn't light because water is uh, non-conductive. Water by itself doesn't conduct electricity. Most people think that it does because they always say, stay out of the water uh, if there's a lightning storm. That's because when you're in the water, you're the conductor. Not to mention all the other stuff that might be dissolved in that particular body of water, right? So pure water, like this, this is just deionized water, doesn't conduct electricity. In order to get it to conduct, remember, we need ions in solution. So we'll start with some sodium chloride. Sodium chloride, we know, is pretty soluble. So if I put a little bit of sodium chloride into my beaker of water, and we'll try to get some of this dissolved here. It doesn't have to completely dissolve. It just has to, we just have to get enough ions into the solution uh, so that the solution will then become conductive. And you can see now, this is a strong electrolyte because the light is fairly bright. Strong electrolyte, okay? A weak electrolyte, so here's some more water. We can test to make sure that it's not conductive. It's just plain old deionized water. And for a weak electrolyte, I'm going to use magnesium sulfate. Magnesium sulfate is an ionic compound, but you'll remember from your solubility rules, uh, sulfates generally are not soluble if the charge on the cation is pretty high, and magnesium has a plus two charge. So uh, it's marginally soluble. I'm gonna dump a bunch in there. And again, we wanna let some ions get into solution, so we need some of this to dissolve anyway. So we'll stir it up a little bit, we'll let some of it dissolve, we'll get our ions in there, and we'll test its conductivity. And you can see the light isn't quite as bright as it was with the sodium chloride. With the sodium chloride, very bright light. With the magnesium sulfate, much less bright. Okay? That's because magnesium sulfate is a weak electrolyte. Not a lot of ions in there. A lot of the ions are still stuck together because they're very positively charged. So in general, and you see this with your solubility rules, um, the higher the charges on the ions, the harder it is to pull them apart in solution. And we'll talk more about that when we get to uh, looking at Coulomb's law, okay? Uh, for my third, here's some more water, okay? Not conductive. I'm going to use uh, some sucrose. Sucrose, okay? Sucrose is just table sugar. Sucrose is not an ionic compound. It is a molecular solid. I'll dump a bunch in there. And when sucrose dissolves, it does dissolve, it dissolves quite well, but it doesn't split into ions. All we have here floating around in here are molecules. And molecules are not charged, therefore molecules don't conduct electricity. So sucrose is an example of a non-electrolyte. Okay, so a conductivity tester is pretty easy to make. It doesn't have to be a light bulb. We'll make one where we use a little uh, sound, a little speaker that makes a noise if it's con conductive. Uh, but essentially that's what we're doing is we're testing to see whether or not electricity is flowing between the two leads. Okay?